Hi there, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to be going through the 2023 talent and salary report for JavaScript. And this is compiled by a recruitment agency called Understanding Recruitment here in the UK. Um, so it's very much relevant for any UK or London based developers and specifically JavaScript. But as you can see here, they've got a number of different reports um, and you can just go on to their website and, and get yours. Um, mine was uh, nicely sent forward to me by um, someone that works there. Um, I think the head of like JavaScript recruitment. Um, so yeah, I'll drop the, um, the link as well to the website below in the comments, but let's dive into it. Cool, so we're here and we've got the JavaScript version of the report. And as I said, if you want to check out the, um, the other ones, um, you can do so um, sort of, yeah, by following the link in the description. And I'm just here going full, full screen so you can see um, hopefully most of that. So let's go on to the next page. So just as an overview, um, you can see this is mostly for front end, um, but yeah, there is some back end parts as well, I believe, but apparently it's been a hugely encouraging year for the front end space, um, which is good to know. And obviously carrying on from the recovery of 2020 um, and into 2021 and last year as well, um, it seems salaries have remained strong and you know they're kind of stabilized. Um, uh, as well but at the, at the moment so what's quite good is that they're seeing developers with up-to-date technology stacks and demonst demonstrably challenging projects <laughs> that they've um, shown influence and impact are regularly receiving multiple job offers quickly so um, it, obviously that kind of it, it sort of doesn't need to be said is that if you've got your up-to-date tech stack um, and you can show projects um, either at work or you know sort of mention them or personal ones or both um, it looks like you know people are still getting um, uh, multiple job offers which is fantastic so um, it's just a bit about generally um, I guess hiring and as you can see here in bold technical testing continue, continues to be an important part of engineer screening um, and, and I know that having been through a number of technical tests um, and my current company is actually hiring at the moment and again the technical test is sort of early on in that hiring process um, so yeah it, it's a very important the other thing here is remote working, still a big lure for engineers. And although we're seeing more companies that now wanting some office time, typically two or three days per week, um, and that's quite common. Uh, I'm, I guess, yeah, I can't speak too much on my own situation, but my previous um, company, um, it was, yeah, one to two days a week. Um, and yeah, I mean, that was fine for where I lived. Um, but yeah, now it's actually uh, well less than that, basically. Um, so yeah, not full remote, but pretty much. So we've gone to location. You can just see this is where JavaScript talent's located. Um, it's just kind of some hubs in um, London, obviously being the main one, just more people um, and the surrounding area. Um, but also Bristol, Manchester, Glasgow, and a couple of others as well. Um, I think these are just talents that are on their books. So this certainly isn't an exhaustive list um, and just, I guess, represents, um, as you can see, sort of, I do know Manchester has quite a big tech hub, um, but there's certainly more than uh, 477 JavaScript developers, um, I'd have thought anyway. So top employers for who are yeah, seeking JavaScript talent. Uh, you can see here, these are some recognizable ones. So Sky, for example, um, I'm not sure who TCS is, but consultancy firm, um, again with ITG, Octopus, uh, you might have known if you sort of lived around London, uh, Barclays as well, obviously a big bank here in the UK, uh, and Vodafone, um, it's been, yeah, uh, sort of telecommunications, um, a, a mobile contract, etc. And you, number 11 here is actually the government digital service. So um, that's obviously sort of working with the various government departments, and I can understand why that that would be big, um, but yeah, uh, quite a wide range of, of companies. Um, and what I'm guessing as well is that these companies, um, you know, hire through understanding recruitment. So, so I guess, yeah, if there's any companies that you like the look of um, or would like to work at as a JavaScript developer, uh, probably best to get in contact with uh, understanding recruitment. And uh, I'm sure, you know, it sounds like there's, uh, yeah, quite a few roles open. 
So in terms of finding talent, what education establishments are producing this talent? Um, what's quite interesting is that 21% of this, which is the largest sector, is free code camp. Um, and yeah, that, that was, uh, the, I guess, the, the route I went um, as a self-taught developer uh, back in 2020, in the summer of, of that year, I started learning to code through free code camp. Um, and sort of have done the first three certificates and as you'll see on the channel have started to um or, yeah obviously i guess over the last few months and the last year almost is um putting up more free code camp videos and going back through the now um sort of alpha um responsive web design certificate but yeah quite interesting that free code camp actually tops that out but there's a number of other universities um and yeah, obviously I went to university, but nothing for technology related or computer science. Um, and also what interested me here was General Assembly um, as well. It's 11%, which is a coding boot camp here in the UK. Um, and funny enough, there aren't any others um, listed here, but let's see, I know there's a, a, a bunch of them. Um, so that's quite interesting. And you can see here, these are the kind of degrees that people I guess, uh, sort of going into JavaScript roles have. Uh, probably the, the most uh, common would be computer science or computer software engineering. Um, but yeah, obviously, as you can see, there's multiple routes. So there's the boot camp, self-taught, or um, different universities with sort of these various degrees. Um, so yeah, it's just a case of finding, I guess, the best way that works for you. Um, and yeah, putting the time in either way. So what are we seeing in the market? Uh, as we might expect, React continues to dominate uh, or be the dominant framework of choice. And that's for companies growing out their front end offering. So apparently 90% of roles coming to the market focus on React and then the rem remainder uh, Angular and a small subsection of Vue. Um, so you might, might think these are the big three, you know, JavaScript libraries or frameworks, however you want to call them. Obviously it's React is dominating um, and it's certainly a skill to not only pick up, but yeah, keep getting better in. And as I am, um, I guess as a sort of a junior to mid-level developer, there's still a lot to learn in React that I'm face facing every day. Um, and as you can see here with TypeScript as well, um, you certainly won't be short of uh, things to learn. Um, TypeScript has been quite interesting to learn over JavaScript um, and obviously companies. Um, and for example, the large e-commerce companies that I've been working with, yeah, all use TypeScript for the front end. Um, and yeah, it's it's very popular. So they're seeing more implementation of Next.js, um, which is interesting, and also GraphQL. So these are two tools that I used at my previous company. Um, and yeah, really fond of Next.js. And certainly if I'm writing React, um, it's often a Next.js application that I'd pick for a personal project. But um, yeah, it's also quite big um, in industry as well. Cool. So, so we just missed a few. So oh, I think it was hiring trends here. So you can see an increasing amount of companies are demanding office time from engineers. Um, it's obviously a careful balance. And yeah, a lot of engineers, I guess, don't want to go back sort of having seen the other side. And I know for myself, I was in before I sort of moved into development. Um, I was working in the travel industry and was in the office, you know, five days a week, uh, nine to five or actually it was nine to six, um, 40 hours a week. So it's quite a long time to be in an office. Um, but yeah, couldn't see myself going back to that now. Um, I much prefer sort of my current setup um, in that I'm sort of, I guess, pretty much remote, but um, yeah. Uh, it's interesting to see companies sort of managing this now. And I think the next few years will be interesting in that. Um, yeah, we'll just sort of have to see how it goes with different companies um, demanding different things from their employees. And the speed of companies hiring process is still paramount. Technical testing is still an important factor, but those being realistic and fair on the time required are seeing the most success. Uh, oops, sorry about that. So two interviews plus maybe a short third work well if kicked off swiftly, swiftly and concluded within two weeks. So I guess the um, this is more for companies that are hiring. And yeah, you don't want a long drawn out process because um, you know, that candidate might, might find somewhere else or get another offer. So, um, typically, yeah, a couple of weeks, um, to interview, um, and obviously that might include a technical test or probably will certainly in the UK, as I've seen, um, that's generally what you could look through or look to go through, um, if you're yeah going through that interview process. Um, so here was the pool of candidates, um, or professional, sorry, in the UK JavaScript talent pool. Um, so I think these are the ones that they're, they're polling. And you can see the gender split in the industry is very much male dominated at 81%. 
Um, but I think it's nice to see that changing. And I know there's a lot of initiatives um, going on, certainly within my company and, and more widely as well um, to get sort of females um, learning to code and I guess starting them off young, um, you know, learning to code or just understanding it is a career or can be an option for you. Um, and I guess, you know, like myself, I didn't think I was technical enough um, to, to learn to program or learn to code. So there's all sorts of limiting beliefs and barriers, um, but yeah, certainly anything that can help females getting into the industry and sort of evening out this um, this breakdown is, is beneficial. Um, and you can see 1.1 years is the medium tenure of JavaScript professionals before they are most likely to move on to a new role, which seems really short, um, especially as I said, coming from my previous job before tech, where I was there for six and a half years and you know couldn't see myself leaving. Um, I think it's it's quite clear that obviously with contractors and you know um, sort of the way things are going with development and, and how it all works, it it does seem it's quite a short time. Um, but when you do find lots of developers at a company that have been there for you know three five plus years, uh, that's kind of probably when you know it's a really good company because um, yeah, developers uh, as you might know if you're currently working will have a lot of offers um, from recruiters uh, all the time and. Hence why I got sent this article from someone who I've never spoken to, never met. Um, I don't know where they got my details from, but yeah, well, thank you for that because um, this creates a video. So, um, but yeah, as you can see, it, it's quite short lived. So it's, yeah, uh, I guess it is what it is within the industry. And you certainly shouldn't um, sort of tie yourself to one company uh, if you're not growing or, you know, feel like you want to change. So. And in terms of the benefits, a strong benefits package is still a key factor for looking to secure in-demand engineers. Um, and you can see most companies are offering the following. So typically a bonus around 10% a year. Um, the pension here is in the range of 8 to 10%. And obviously this is um, sort of UK. So um, it's all in pounds uh, as well as, um, you know, I guess there's some some UK things here, certainly with pension, it's evenly split between employer and employee. And sometimes the employer com employee um, or employer can play, pay more. Um, and obviously pension schemes differ between companies. Um, private health and dental insurance is not actually something I've come across, but yeah, is available for some roles. Um, 25 days holiday minimum, minimum with more moving to unlimited. Um, yeah, quite interesting and sort of, I guess one of the things that you can negotiate on um, when you're accepting any roles and, you know, the full equipment set up as well. So you might get a MacBook or uh, Windows um, and sort of getting a lot of office supplies as well, because majority of us now is, let's say, working from home. You might be able to have a, a budget or allowance for a new desk or chair or screens as well. They should be able to provide. Um, and you can see here a training budget as well. Uh, typically 250 500 pounds and really that's an investment in obviously their talent as in the company's talent um, nothing worse than sort of having someone uh, you know going year over year and not really learning too much more um, and ultimately not benefiting the business so as you can see here startups and those in early stages often offer stock options as part of any deal this is usually to counter a lack of other typical benefits uh, financially uh, such as a bonus so uh, rather than a bonus let's say if you're at a startup you might get some stock options which um, you know may or may not increase over time and or lead to a payout um, so I guess it's one of the factors of, of if you're looking at sort of joining a startup as an engineer um, or a more established company but there's certainly many companies in between um, sort of SME, so small and medium sized enterprises in the UK. Um, and I guess that's kind of what I worked with up until my current company, um, who are a large, yeah, sort of large um, e-commerce company. So what benefits are most important? And yeah, obviously, as a, <laughs> there's no surprises there. Remote working is a key factor. Um, and a growing number of engineers apparently want an element of office time um, if the commute is minimal. So that was myself, I guess, if the um, office is not too far away. Um, I say we're sort of between 30 minutes, half an hour. Obviously, if it's less, that's great. Um, yeah, it could go in once or twice a week. Um, but I would say no more than that. Um, and often as well, if you're working with developers uh, sort of spread around the country or overseas, yeah, there's really no need to be in the office when your daily stand up, uh, you know, has most of the other engineers um, or, or product teams just, you know, dialing in. So 
Um, as you can see, their flexible hours are also a huge plus um, if companies are, are sort of happy to accommodate that. And generally what I found is that companies often have core hours, so let's say 10 till 4 or something, um, and then you can kind of be a bit flexible either side of that. Um, obviously it's just for meetings and, and other things like that. So um, continuing on from the benefits, there's obviously information about the bonus and um, yeah, holiday allowance, which I think is all quite standard. Um, but as you can see, here's the breakdown and obviously salary and remote working um, are, are, the, are the top two. And obviously then it sort of tails off. But yeah, interesting that a product focused business is also quite high up there. Um, they want to, engineers want to, want tech to be at the heart of the business. Um, and obviously the tech firms that are, you know, technology driven, um, I guess the engineers have a better time, um, sort of probably better development experience, um, and are, are more valued in the workplace. You know, if a company is sort of only hiring developers because they have to, not because they want to, um, that's normally where, let's say sort of some issues arise or it's perhaps not a as a good place to work at um, if it's maybe a product focused business. So yeah, let's go on to the salary guide. So I think this is quite a fair breakdown and these are example salaries um, based on placement data from this year and last. So this is for JavaScript professionals in the UK, just bearing in mind, so this is all pounds. Um, and as you can see, the um, salary brackets here are based on their internal data. So, you know, these are, are roles that they've actually placed. Um, so you can see between one to two years of experience, you can look for about 40 to 55K. And yeah, I think that's that's pretty fair. I'm within that range um, for reference. And I'd consider myself having sort of one and a half years dev experience now, um, coming up to two. Um, and obviously, yeah, I'll be looking at these sort of next few years um, to really start to grow and continue to learn um, and sort of continue on this trajectory here. Um, as you can see, tech lead and engineering manager 130 plus, um, which is yeah, quite a bit. And, and actually, um, I do know sort of, I guess, yeah, within my company, sort of the four to seven years, you can certainly look between um, probably 80, 90 and then to the 120 plus, not seven years um, of experience here. Um, but yeah. So anyway, here is the, um, I guess the fellow that sent me um, <laughs> this uh, this report. So Ben Mellows, um, feel free, as I said, to get in contact with him um, if there was uh, yeah any roles that you're looking at um, or any more information um, that might be interesting there. If I just go back here now, um, one more thing that I'd like to announce, and I think I've mentioned it actually a couple of times now, but I am offering um, sort of one-to-one -one 30 minute Zoom call, um, either voice or, or video, um, for aspiring and, and junior developers that are looking to break into the tech industry. Um, obviously, as I did back in 2021, um, you know, there's a lot of information out there and obviously all of these reports, are, you know, it's, it's quite nice to see what you potentially can achieve um, salary-wise and obviously benefit as well um, being a self-taught developer and obviously as you saw there you know there was a good percentage of, uh, of people that were accepting roles that had their education from free code camp so um, that was really cool to see and yeah as I said if you'd like to book in a call with me the details will be below and I'll be able to help you with your CV your LinkedIn portfolio um, and those kind of things to get you up and and sort of yeah ready up and going for your um, next technical interview so Thanks for watching, hope it was insightful and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.